We're going to be looking at a passage, and I'm going to be looking at how authors use uh, information to, to make a piece of history real. What type of sources they use, how do they create authenticity. One of the ways they do it is by giving actual accounts of people that lived during what happened in history. So I'm going to show you how I uh, will read a passage and look for that and then at the or toward the end of class we'll get into small groups and you all can then practice l seeing how an author uses uh, different ways or devices to make a piece of history more real. So I'm thinking already the reading is going to be something about we've been studying here in class. So let me get started. The first thing I do as a reader when I look at something, and you all can look on because you all have this in front of you, is I don't dive right in. I look at the whole reading as a whole, okay? And almost the first thing that draws my attention is the picture. And I look at what do I see in the picture? I see ladies at work. Um, it doesn't look like, you know, this time period. It probably looks like the time period we're studying, the early 1900s. I all, can also read the caption. This picture shows little of the frantic activity of a sweatshop. Often workers put in long hours in dimly lit factories. So that gives me a clue. Okay, it looks like these women are probably working long hours. They're working in a factory. Let me now go to the heading. Starting at the top, the main heading is workers strike at the Triangle Company. Let me look at the subheadings. The first one is, I have no more patience for talk. Okay. So what is, I, I'm kind of asking myself a question. What does that mean? No more patience for talk. There's going to be something more than just people talking. What are, well, what are they going to do? Is that going to be the strike? And then the next heading is, okay, well, there it is. Strike at the Triangle Factory. So it looks like I'm going to be reading about workers who have poor working conditions and maybe they're going to go on strike. I've kind of gotten that from the picture and the subheadings. I'm going to go ahead and start now. It says, starting at the first paragraph, on November 22nd, 1909, about 3,000 workers crowded into a meeting hall in New York City. Right from the topic sentence, I can think about the early 1900s. Right there it said 1909. Okay, so I can already picture what this crowded meeting hall looks like in New York City in the early 1900s. And then I can read on. Most were teenage immigrant women. They were shirtwaist workers. The next uh, subheading really gets my attention because for one, it's in quotations. It says, I have no patience, no more patience for talk. So is this going to be someone talking? Who is the speaker going to be? And I'm asking myself, how's that going to relate to the strike and what we're, what we're studying in the class? Then a teenager named Clara Lemlich rose to speak. She had just gotten out of the hospital. Okay, I see a switch there. When I'm reading and I hear that, I see that word then, then a speaker, or then a teenager named Clara rose to speak, I think, okay, something's gonna change here. And in this case, there's going to be a speaker. And her name is, uh, the author gives me her name, so I feel like it's more real. If the author, the author had just said, oh, a teenager rose to speak, I might, I don't know if I'm buying it as much as they put the, they gave me the full name, Clara Lemlich. Let me see what happens with this. She had, just, she had just gotten out of the hospital. While walking a union picket line, she had been beaten and then arrested by the police. Lemlich spoke in Yiddish. When I see that comma, Maybe the next information will tell me what Yiddish is. Lemlich spoke in Yiddish, the language spoken by Jewish people in Eastern Europe. Okay, so now I have more information about the speaker. Her name is Clara Lemlich. She speaks Yiddish, and she's probably uh, Jewish and from Eastern Europe. This gives me more authenticity to the speaker. I feel like this is real. The author has put her in this reading for a purpose, okay? Also, I'm making connections. I know in here we've been studying about immigrants from Eastern Europe who went, who left Europe to work in factories. Clara must be one of those people who left Europe to work in a factory. Let me see what she has to say. I think this next part where the, it kind of looks almost like a newspaper column where they indent on both sides is going to be what Clara says. That this is going to be her speech. And I know that her tone is kind of, kind of angry, kind of intense. She wants to get people's attention. 
So when I, when I read that, I'm kind of going to have that tone. If I were reading to myself, I would have it in my head, or if I'm reading out loud, it says, I am a working girl and one of those who are on strike. I have listened to all these speakers and I have no more patience for talk. There's my subheading that I read earlier. We who strike have suffered, but we suffer in a great cause. I move, we go on general strike. So this is kind of what I do when I, when I read. Some of the strategies I use, I want you all now, we're going to get in small groups and you all will read the next section. And I want you to think about what I did, particularly I want you to see what the author did to give some authenticity to this story. Specifically, they used a speaker named Clara Lemlich to give us more of a connection to what we're reading. They gave us information about Clara. They gave uh, where she was from. So we feel like this is a real person. So as we read further about the strike, I want you to notice if the author gives more stories like that to make this piece of history more real for us. Yeah, and then that, that girl um, didn't want to hear like what they were what they were talking about. So like she that's why that's when she got up and then like, I guess started talking about what she was thinking about it. And she was she was like tired of them, of, of hearing like everything they were saying about it. It was basically just saying that it was like the company spread through the triangle, then its owners found out that some of their workers had joined a new union. So they had a strike and then they went somewhere else. Yeah.